in the world to be. This is one of my favorite days of the year. I love coming here, I love performing for you guys. It is, I, I think I'm really lucky to be able to do this, and be able to give, give this to you. But I'm not gonna tell you a story right now, because what I wanna do is, is have that chair passed over to you. Look, look, bring it and um, as those of you that didn't hear what I was saying inside the inside the uh, cafeteria, refectory, dining room, is that Odds Bodkin is an internationally known storyteller. He is, he is really good. As we say in New England, he's wicked good. Um, wicked. And um, it, it's kind of interesting because. He was, he was pretty much the second storyteller I ever heard doing real story, what I consider real oral storytelling. And Angela, I think it was your first. Yeah, so he was, he was, he's, a, he's an inspiration to both Angela and I. And I, I am thrilled that he agreed to come here today. So could you please put your hands together for him? <laughs> Imagination, I can offer you words, characters, music, and sounds as I sit in my chair, but it'll be up to you guys to take those things and in your mind's eye, right back here, make a kind of movie. And if you do, the stories will come to life. Hopefully, I'll disappear in my chair and we'll have a lot of fun. So, what do you think? Deal? Yeah! yeah. yeah. of the Samurai Warriors. For those of you who don't know who the Samurai Warriors were, they were a class of amazing swordsmen and archers who protected the warlords of ancient Japan. Here's a word that might be unfamiliar to you. If you can learn this word, it is Shogun. Can you say that word? Shogun. S-H-O-G-U-N. The Shogun was a great local king in ancient Japan. And that's probably the only unfamiliar word you'll encounter in this story. This is an old folk tale. Oh, before I tell it though, how many of you have at least at one point in your life wished you were somebody else? <laughs> Thing. Well, this is an old story about that very thing. It's called the stone cutter. Mountain, a stone. 
stone cutter with a sweatband across his forehead, lifted his heavy hammer, looked at the side of the mountain, and as hard as he could, struck at the rock, and a little shard of stone fell off and joined a pile at his feet. He was cutting stone. He struck the mountain again, another piece of stone fell at his feet, and then another, and then another. Until the pile had grown, and noontime came, he was hungry and thirsty. So he put down his hammer, leaned against the stone, and drank a little bit of water, had a little rice cake, and he thought to himself, why is it? that every day I must come to this mountain to cut just enough stone, to have just enough gold, to buy just enough rice and just enough water, to have just enough for my family and me so I can come here to this mountain for one more day. I don't wish to be myself. I wish I had another life. And at that moment, he heard. The sound of horses far off. And he looked down into the valley. And there he saw a cloud of dust. He looked more closely. And lo and behold, it was the Shogun himself galloping along on his horse at the head of a great army. And the stone cutter stared down at the shogun, saw all the men who obeyed his every word, saw the pennants fluttering from the bamboo stalks at their backs and their swords and their bows. And he thought to himself, ah, now there is a powerful man I do not wish to be why. I wish I was the Shogun. And as if by some strange enchantment, his spirit flew out of his body and down into the side of the mountain and then into the body of the Shogun. And suddenly, the stone cutter was looking out of the Shogun's eyes. He could feel the wide back of the horse beneath him. He was inside the Shogun's helmet. And he thought, ha, 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 I am the Shogun. Ha, ha, ha. He looked back and he could see the soldiers galloping along behind him. And he thought, ha, ha, no, I am the most powerful of all things. But as he rode along, he began to wonder. If it came to a battle, would he know what to tell those soldiers to do? But worse than that, inside the great war helmet of the Shogun, it grew hot. He thought he sweated a lot on the mountainside, but at least he was not inside a helmet. And as he stared out, the sweat stung his eyes more than ever it had done before. And he gazed through the helmet's visor up at the sky, and there he saw the sun blazing there. And the stone cutter said, Wait, I don't know which to be the Shogun. <laughs> the sun is making me uncomfortable. I wish I were the sun. And as if some strange enchantment had grabbed his spirit, he flew out and up through the clouds, and suddenly his face entered the blazing circle of the sun, and he could feel the flames pouring from his face. And he said to himself, Ah, I am the sun. Now I am the most powerful of all things. And he looked down upon the earth there, round and blue and moist in the distance, 
So excited was the stonecutter in the sun with all the power of his flame and of his light, he decided he would shine. And so he began to shine brighter than the sun ever had. And as he did, down upon the earth, it grew hot. The streams began to dry up. So to the lakes, until at last, all the water from the lakes was gone, and the ground cracked into splits that ran for miles. People could find no water. The animals could find no water. But still, the stone cutter, so excited with all that power, just shone. But it was then that from between all that light and that earth far below, a storm cloud drifted, and he saw that immediately the thick storm cloud had just blocked his power, and he said, Wait, well, I do not wish to be the sun, why the storm and the rain has more power than the sun, I wish I were the rain. And suddenly he flew out of the sun and down into a into a great cloud filled with winds he landed. And he could feel his strength as he rolled across the world. And he said, Ah, now I am the storm. Now I am more powerful. So excited was he, he decided he would rain. And so out of his clouds dumped rain, more rain than ever had fallen before. Almost immediately the lakes began to fill. They flooded over their banks and swept across the fields, mowing away the crops and the villages. And he decided he would become the flood itself. And so he joined that flash flood right at its head as it thundered down a valley. And he thought, Argh, nothing can stop the flood. But that was when up ahead he saw a mountain appear. And he struck it with all his force, but half of him went to the right, and half of him was split off to the left why the mountain had broken the flood into two pieces. And he said, I do not wish to be. The flood, the mountain is more powerful than I am. I wish I were the mountain. And into the mountain, And he could feel his immense weight. And he said to himself, <clears throat> No, I am the most powerful of all things. And that was what he heard. <clears throat> ah, what is that? Something was chipping at him. <laughs> what is that? Ah, uh, something is cutting me. He discovered he could not escape the mountain. His spirit was there forever, and he looked, and there on his slope, shipping him away, was a stone cutter, sweating beneath his headband in the sun. And the stone cutter, if you want to make a rhythm, we can finish this off. He looked at the stone cutter and said, 